Hello guys, in this video we'll try to deep dive in Tori architecture and understand how Tori works behind the scenes. Actually if you have been following my channel for some time now or even if you are new to this channel, I have created tons of videos on Rust programming language. We have covered almost every language specific concept and I have also built videos on different cross platform development framework using Rust like Tori, Dioxys in future. I also plan to explore other frameworks and as these frameworks continue to mature over the time, I do plan to create tons of interesting projects with these frameworks on this channel. But after my recent video on Tori, one of my subscribers reached out to me on Discord and asked for a detail on how Tori works behind the scene. And when I browse over the internet to find the resources to share with him, I couldn't find much there in terms of the detailed architecture of how Tori works behind the scene. So I thought better to create a video and explain to everyone in our community. So this video basically covers all the design of how Tori operates behind the scenes, how you are rendered with that beautiful UI that you have and how it interacts with your Rust commands, channels. So without further ado, let's dive into it and let's begin. And as we start, there's a link to my Discord description. Make sure you join it. And you can also send me your recommendations or suggestions of any particular topics that you want me to cover. I'll be happy to do so. So let's begin. So let's try to understand how Tori works. So first of all, we have our front end, our UI, which we can write in HTML, CSS, React, Vue, Svelte, and we have different other options as well, which we have seen in Tori CLI. So when we write our front end, our front end is rendered as a web view for desktop as well as mobile applications. And then we have inter-process communication or IPC with our backend, which has our commands, channels, plugins. Now plugins I have not covered in this video. We'll cover in a separate video, but we'll see the difference today between a command and a plugin. The channels we have covered where we, you know, update our front end using our Rust code and command is basically just an action that we have on our Rust and we can invoke that action from our front end. And that communication happens using IPC, inter-process communication. So commands, just to remind you guys, we have seen the commands, we write something like this in Rust. So we have a greet command and it returns a string. And then we can invoke this greet command from the front end passing the argument with the same name. So we have lice and we pass the name and we return the response and we show it uh, in our javascript now plugins is more generic so commands you write for your own application let's say i build the same application i have to rewrite those commands for my application but plugins can be shared so as you guys can see there is a tori plugin sql and we are using this sql plugin all the implementation will remain with rust to talk your talk to talk to your db and you know work with it but as you can see, we can use it in our JavaScript. As you can see, uh, we can basically talk to the DB and execute certain commands. So that's when we use plugin. I do plan some videos on plugin as well, where we'll build our own or use uh, existing plugins for file system, notification, DB and so on. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now let's get back to the design. So basic is clear on high level. We have a front end, which is rendered as a web view and talks to our backend using inter-process communication IPC. Now our backend has all the logic for our commands or the plugins as we just saw and also our channels as we have covered in different videos. So this handles all the logic, all the business logic of our application, our Rust core backend. And then we have bundler and runtime. Now Tori includes bundler to package the application combining frontend and backend into a single binary and a runtime to manage applications executions. So this layer ensures the app can run efficiently on target OS like, you know, uh, Linux, Windows, and then uh, iOS, Android. So this is the layer responsible for bundling your application and ensuring it efficiently runs on different OS. And then we have uh, different OS and system services. So application interact with, you know, uh, underlining operating systems like Windows, Mac, Linux, and its services like file system, network to Rust. So this is how we have the high level overview of how uh, basically Tori works behind the scene. But let's deep dive and try to understand this layer a bit more of how the rendering happens and 
what take care of the communication and all other stuff. So for that, let's try to understand with this flow chart that we have. First of all, we have our operating system where our application is up and running. It could be Windows, Linux, Mac, uh, iOS, Android. And then we have Tau. Now Tau creates native window event loop, manages system events like, you know, uh, window resize, clicks and other stuff. Then we have our app start and we have our front end web view via very or WRY, which is again a package in Rust that helps for uh, cross platform web views. So that's what Tori use as well to render your application on iOS, Android desktop, depending on where you want to run your application. So Tori for mobile is a web view. And then let's say users trigger certain action. There is IPC or inter-process communication, as we just mentioned for uh, Tori to talk to your backend, which is your Rust and executes whatever your operation is. It's a command plugin or even uh, when you have like, uh, let's say your Rust core talks to another plugin, which is as an example, we just saw uh, SQL or you have your channels and then again, all the interactions basically happen with your OS because plugins can also, you know, read files or uh, send notifications and other stuff. So for that also need to communicate to your OS. So that's how on a high level Tori operates behind the scenes. You have inter-process communication between your front end and back end and uh, that's performed through IPC uses very or WRY create to uh, render your web views and uh, Tau for your uh, managing your application. Uh, events and uh, you know like all the window events and other stuff a bit more on inter-process communication helps us communicate between our web view and the backend so one way is through events that is more like fire and forget and uh, mainly useful when we want to you know send out updates of uh, some changes like state changes and other stuff so as you can see it's just fire and forget uh, from either side the backend as as well as the web view and then commands which are more like an IPC request that goes to the core backend. And then you have your invoke command, uh, basically execute the command, serialize the response, and then return the response. So that's how uh, the communication works. And to the architecture, we just discussed on a high level how Tori works behind the scene. And I'll drop this link in the description so you guys can go over this, read this, as you can see the major two components uh, as you can see, Tori is not a lightweight kernel wrapper. Instead, it directly uses Vary and Tau to do the heavy lifting in making system calls and the OS. So that's what we just discussed. And you have your core ecosystem, Tau and Vary, and then uh, all of other stuff as well, which are different uh, packages. So you can read a bit more uh, here. I'll drop the link in the description. But overall, I hope you guys are clear on how Tori renders using WebView, how the communication happens and uh, how our what who's responsible for rendering the windows and who's responsible for which part of our application lifecycle so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys understand and learn something new if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic until then 